How many of you guys out there know how to sew or maybe even thread a bobbin? Well, what is a bobbin? Hmm. The more you know, we're getting into it today because September is National Sewing Month, and we're talking about how sewing played a big role in St. Louis's fashion industry. Joining me now is celebrity historian Rafi Andonian. Rafi, thanks so much for being here with me today. Hey, you know I love fashion. You know, I know, what is me easy too. Top they come running as fast as they can because <laughs> every girl crazy about a sharp dress, man. And that's the truth. <laughs> we love when our men look good, and Rafi, you look dashing as well, thank always. You. Of course, you're had welcome. To. You're welcome. Now you brought in something special today. What is this? This is my great grandmother's sewing machine oh from a hundred plus years ago. She was Greek who lived in Egypt so this has traveled across the world to wow. be here and yeah of course it's a singer which is a very popular sewing machine brand for more than a century. Came all the way right here to St. Louis. I love it. I mean <laughs> what did people think of the sewing machine when it first came out? Believe it or not, there was a lot of debate about it. So it first came out in the middle 19th century. The technology existed before that. But when it first came out in the mid-19th century, it was this kind of, you know, like a lot of times we have a new tech, there's kind of pros and cons. So some women were very excited because they said, I can get a year's worth of work sewing, yeah. of making clothes for the household, done in one week. Ooh, that's what one lady that said. That sounds dreamy. But I, that's right. <laughs> and that allows me to participate in social life because they felt like they were excluded thanks to being tied down working. But on the other hand, there were other women that said, no, it's not the same thing of the supple touch of the hand with the bone and nerve and fiber oh. and the touch that you have. So this discussion as with any new technology, there's this kind of debate around whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. Now Singer, which is right here in front of us, was successful globally because of a couple of different reasons. So for example, it had great marketing. They did a lot of advertising and they did what's called price loss. Like you know, go to a grocery store, sometimes you see a bag of chips for like 50 cents. They want to get you in the door losing goods on some money on something so they can open the network. So Singer did the same Which thing. Smart. That's, that's right. That's an incredible that's, marketing tool in That's exactly opinion. right. Now they're also in economics. I have a background in marketing at econ too. So this is kind of where it comes in handy in history is in, in economics what they did was they did what's called price discrimination, which means they charge a different price in different places depending on the market. That's right, that allowed it to sell better and because it's a durable good, what economists call meaning you keep it for a while, unlike say like a paper cup or laundry detergent, you keep it for a while, you're not going to get repeat sales. So what they did is they came up with a service contract. Singer started to help start that. So you continue to go back for the maintenance so they continue to bring in revenue. That all starts from the sewing machine. We still use it to this day. Think about a car. A car is a durable good. You're not going to buy a car every year. So what does, it, what does a car dealer do? They give They're you a like, service come contract. On. Come on back. Exactly. Get your that's oil right. changed. Get so your tires fixed. That's how the sewing machine is thought about. And then the Singer with those marketing and economics tactics continues to spread it around the world. I love this. I mean, who knew there was so much history about it? And you, you mentioned that kind of debacle. And it affects between, us today. Is, right. I know. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Right. Right. But we say now it's a, it's a, it's a good thing, right? We enjoy it because it's retro, right? But now think about it at the time, though, that we're talking about in the late 19th and into early 20th century. I would say that this also helped democratize fashion. What it means is before, only the elite can go get nice dresses because you have to go get custom tailored. Even to this day, custom clothing is expensive. It's still expensive. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> However, what the sewing machine did, along with other factors such as the mass production of fabric that didn't exist in the 18th century and the sort of the cheap, effect, uh, cheap availability of the pieces made it so that you can make different clothes at home. So now, like if you're not elite, you can actually at home afford to wear different kinds of clothing instead of the same item that you're wearing over and over. That makes a big difference. So it's a great example that technology isn't enough because the technology was there but it didn't take off until the social norms and the social classes and the status stuff came into play as well. And in addition, the business had to be profitable. Singer figured out a way to make this profitable to continue to spread it, democratizing fashion. Now you know what's funny about that? Oh, fill me in. <laughs> make me laugh. <laughs> well, what's funny about that is how things change over time. So. The New York Times called this the best boon to women because of freeing them up, right? A lady's book said it's the queen of inventions until later. You see, technology kept changing and social norms kept changing and you had what's called the ready-to-wear dresses that we think of now. You can go get a dress ready to wear off the rack because now it's getting cheaper and cheaper. Now suddenly, instead of this being a symbol of status and something that's really cool, it starts to decline in status in the 1920s. Remember 1920s, the roaring 20s? Yeah, Big yeah. consumer goods, everyone's looking good, right? That whole thing. Now what you're going to do is this is going to start to decline because you're going to say, no, no, no. Me, I don't want to be making clothes at home. I want to buy it off the rack. So it means housewife who's go from production to consumers, and that's how it starts to decline. Oh my gosh, and there's so much history there about is. the sewing now, machine. I'll just say real quick, St. Louis ties in because of fashion, because St. Louis 
is part of the with fashion the industry. Boom. The, the boom of the ready to wear clothing, which actually helped reduce the popularity of the sewing machine. So we're part of the reason sewing hey, machines are popular. Or know, we like it now because it's retro. It's 100 well, plus years I old. I mean, Come this on. is really cool. And shout out to your great grandmother. I'm so glad That's that you right. still have right this as part of your family history. And thank you so much for sharing it with us. Of course. It's have a Louis. fashionable week. Ew, thank you. I, I like to do that every good. single day. Thank you, Rafi. And St. Louis, if you want to continue to learn more about some amazing history, maybe even here in St. Louis or beyond, really all across the country, you can check out Rafi online at CelebrityHistorian.com. You can also follow him on Facebook and on YouTube, Instagram as well. We'll post all of that on our website at studiostl.tv. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this quick break.